Who is ready for dirt cheap dinners? Hi friends, welcome to Meals with Maria. Today we are making dirt cheap dinners. These dinners are so cheap that one of them even comes in below 50 cents a serving. Yes, you can feed your whole family. If you're four, if you're six, you are gonna be well under $5. And for us, for our family, that's under $2 to feed us for dinner with a delicious meal. I have three recipes today that maybe aren't groundbreaking, but you can take what you already have in your pantry or in your fridge and just spruce them up and really make them gourmet out of something that at its core is costing less than $2 a serving and is just so cheap. These are the things that you can make on a week when you're like, oh my goodness, how are we going to make this budget work? You can make it work with these recipes. Let me show you how. I'm gonna start off by making a tuna melt. A tuna melt is such a budget-friendly meal. I'm just gonna make a couple of them. So I'm using one can of tuna, but if you wanna make four or six, just double that or triple that recipe. At its core, a tuna melt is so inexpensive. A can of tuna at Walmart is 78 cents. A loaf of sandwich bread is 93 cents. You can get sliced cheese for $2.22 and mayo for $2.28. But when you break that down per serving on what you're actually using to make this basic tuna melt, your total is 97 cents per sandwich, which is so, so inexpensive. I am sprucing mine up today based on what I have around the house and I'm making what is called the ultimate tuna melt. You can use a little bit of celery if you have that. If you don't have that, that's absolutely fine. And then I'm cutting up some fresh parsley, but dried parsley will do as well. You can use minced red onion, yellow onion, Vidalia onion, or onion powder, and add that right into your salad. I really like to mince my onion pretty small in a salad like this, but if you're an onion lover and you like bigger chunks, go ahead and cut that. Always make sure that you do things the way that you like it. In the end, you're the person eating it, not the person who wrote the recipe. Then you wanna add in some mayonnaise. I'm adding a couple tablespoons to start and a little squeeze of Dijon mustard with a little bit of salt. Everything except the mayonnaise is totally optional. Hopefully you do have a little salt on hand and you can sprinkle that on your salad if you're only doing a plain mayonnaise tuna salad. I'm gonna mix everything around and see how you're feeling about your mayonnaise content. I did end up adding a little bit more because I like a little bit more mayonnaise in my salad. As we head into the summer season, tomatoes are gonna to become more plentiful and less expensive and just more delicious overall. So if you have a tomato on hand, go ahead and add that to your tuna melt. It really does add a lot. It is not necessary to make a basic tuna melt, but if you have a tomato or you know somebody who has a garden or you can grow your own tomato plant, even if it's just on a patio, you are gonna be so thankful. Now, as I said, a tuna melt is delicious enough on a plain wheat or white bread, I happened to make my own sourdough bread and it was fresh out of the oven that day. I will put a nice sourdough video and recipe down below for you guys. If you've been wanting to make your own sourdough, it is so satisfying, so delicious, and really a huge budget item because you're making that out of nothing. You're making your whole starter out of just flour and baking the bread also is just flour and water and a little bit of salt. So it's wild how amazing making your own bread is. Just wanna to top the bread with half of the tuna mixture and then we'll cover that with tomato and some cheese. I'm just using a cheddar cheese, but you can use whatever you have on hand. There's also the option to put cheese below the tuna and on top of the tuna, which is, I'm sure, delicious, but that's a lot of cheese for me, so I opted to just do it on one side. Now I'm putting a little bit of butter on the top of my bread because I am gonna cook these in a pan today, but you also have the option to just cook this in the oven, and if you don't have butter or oil or anything like that on hand, you can just put it on a pan and put it in the oven and it will still get a nice, delicious melted cheese on it and it will still taste really good. 
Over medium heat, you wanna cook these for about two to three minutes until the cheese starts to melt and everything's getting golden brown and then flip them over to the other side and cook until the cheese is really fully melted and that side is also golden brown. I had a friend over this particular day and we had debated going out for lunch and just grabbing McDonald's or something quick and easy with the kids. And then I said, you know what? Let's just stay home and I'll make something. And this was one million times better than what we would have had had we gone out. So we saved money and we got to have an amazing meal. For this next meal, we are shopping the freezer. I am looking for what we have in here to add to some simple baked potatoes. I just have russet potatoes. I rub them in a little bit of olive oil and put a little salt on them. I also poke them with a fork, then put them on some parchment paper in the oven and cooked them at 425 degrees for about 45 minutes. Now a baked potato is so versatile. I'm just serving it with what I have. I'm adding some of those bacon pieces. The kids actually ended up loving those. I did have some fresh bacon on hand too. I shredded up like the last tiny little square of cheese that I had and the last of some sour cream in a tub. So it's a great way to use up everything that is left. I also found in my freezer, what I was pulling out there was some chili that I had frozen. And I'm like, that's perfect just to put over a baked potato. Now, if you are buying these items at Walmart to make your baked potato, your potato is gonna run you about 69 cents each. Chili is $1.24 for a can, and you probably use about a quarter of that. Broken down by serving, cheese is 23 cents, sour cream is 14 cents, and your total is $1.37 for one chili baked potato, and that is a fabulous meal. It is so good. Some other options are you could add some avocado, some salsa, and maybe some black beans, and do like a Fiesta baked potato or a Mexican baked potato. The options are endless when it comes to adding things that you already have around your house to a baked potato and making a whole meal out of it. We ended up just serving this with a salad from the garden, so that didn't cost us anything extra, and I was actually happy to use up some stuff that I found in my freezer. I was also hoping to maybe find some frozen broccoli, but I didn't have any, so that's also another option to add to your baked potato. And if you guys have ideas, feel free to please comment below on some great baked potato additives, because I would love to know. This next recipe is a simple rice and beans recipe, but it was a combination that I had never tried before. I am simply cooking up one serving of rice according to the package instructions. Now I'm gonna use black beans for this. I'm just using a can that I had in my pantry, but if you have time or you think ahead or you're gonna try and save a lot of money, go ahead and cook up some dried black beans either in the Instant Pot or in a pot. I'll put some recipes down below to save some money on those. For my canned beans, I am just gonna rinse those off before I cook them. I chose just to microwave mine and add a little bit of onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper but you can totally add some chili powder or even taco seasoning to that, or you can buy already seasoned black beans. Now this is the part of the rice and beans dish that I hadn't seen before. You're gonna cook up one over easy egg or as many as you're making for servings. I was just making this for lunch and it was just for me, so one serving, but this made enough for all my whole family to eat. If I were to make it for them, I would have just made four eggs. You just wanna put rice in a bowl Top that with your black beans and your fried egg, and that is it. And this is the same as those potatoes. You can make it your own. You can add anything you want to it. So I think a diced up avocado would taste good with this, as well as some salsa or sour cream, or you can go in a different direction and maybe even do like soy sauce and some vegetables. This meal as is, is absolutely delicious. Such a great lunch. And it comes in at 44 cents a serving. So this is kind of a no brainer for when you're just grabbing things, putting it together for the family. This is delicious. They will love it. That egg yolk in there tastes so good. 
If you love super simple budget cooking, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm posting three budget recipe videos a week now. Make sure to also click on this next video coming up because I'm making super simple meals based off of macaroni and cheese, which is so easy and will totally save your budget. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.